Money Monday is sponsored by Husky Financial. We all know gas prices are out of control. It's no secret that the cost of oil has a direct effect on inflation, a trickle-down effect that hits trucking companies and ultimately lands in the hands of the consumer. On this Money Monday, we'd like to welcome back Vanessa Gant, accountant and tax strategist for Provision Accounting Solutions. And, and you know a lot about this space of trucking. And, and we want to kind of focus on trucking because it affects all of us not if you own a company or drive a truck, but if you're just a consumer in this country, is that right? That is absolutely correct for me. So anything that you have on in your car, in your house, at some point in time, it was on a truck. Yes, indeed. And we've been looking at a lot of ups and downs over the last few years. I wanna talk a bit about the trend that you're now seeing in trucking. The biggest trend that's happening in trucking right now is, it's not only trucking, but just us in general, is the rise in price of fuel. Yeah. It's insane. It is, it is. <laughs> you know, and it's a trickle down effect also to us as the consumers, but what it's really doing to trucking companies is um, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of my clients where their fuel costs have went from 24% uh, of, of their profit margin in January, up which to 38 and 40% now. I mean, and let's put that into dollars, shall we? Because I've been hearing truckers fueling up in excess of $1,000 for a tank of gas. Well, we end up paying for that, but the trucker is also paying and the truck companies are also paying for that. So what happens when it's untenable at that point, when you just can't afford the gas anymore? They need to, that, this is where that art of negotiation and relationships come into play when you're in, you know, when you're in trucking. I always say it's the relationships. When you build the relationships with your shippers or with your, you know, your customers, they understand that you've been there for them, so now they want to be here for you. Mm -hmm. Also, managing uh, your fuel costs, like looking at your fuel costs, making sure that you're only driving your truck for freight delivery, you know, reasons, and not, you know, not to go home, not to go to the store. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only using it for freight okay. delivery. Okay, well that makes a lot of sense. And again, it does affect us as the consumer because eventually those costs do get passed along to us. So would you see that there is now less demand because I've also heard that a lot of stores, they are discounting summer items things that are in season right now, they're discounting those because they just want people to come in the doors and get that stock off their hands. Are we going to be seeing less trucking for a while because we've got less supply that's being freighted to and fro? We're always gonna see the trucks. Yeah. We, we can't operate without the trucks. Sure. So, but what we will see, so we'll probably see a delay in getting delay. items to the shelf. Okay. Um, you know, there's this- Not less movement. We just have to wait longer. We just have to wait longer. And we've been, and we saw that during COVID, the supply chain issues, and then the trickle down from that, even with home building and and all those supplies taking forever to get into the hands of the people who need it. So even here, here we go again. Yes, I mean, on, on a, for a different reason. So right. even when we come into the supply chain, it's not even like the rise in cost of fuel, but even the way that we, the time in which we are getting the supplies mm -hmm. to us. Um, we're looking at what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely, you know, affecting our fuel prices. But then we also can see that China just had another lockdown because of COVID-19, which is now going to cause, you know, a, it's going to cause a hiccup in the efforts that were being put forth to move forward the yeah. supply chain. Um, I've been, you know, reaching out and talking with my counterparts and a lot of them are predicting that we're going to continue to have a supply chain issue for the next six to 12 months. Okay, six to 12 months. Six to 12 months. All right, I mean, it sounds like we can weather that storm and with just a few seconds left, I, I wanna talk about jobs because jobs and trucking became the hot thing during COVID, we needed drivers. So a lot of people went out, they got their commercial licenses, they got, they hit the road, now what's happened? Oh. It's um, it's it's been a it's been a roller coaster ride for some people. Yeah. So drivers are definitely still needed. Yeah. But what I saw from my personal experience is that there were a lot of people. And there was this wave when trucking was the new shiny object. Sure. It's like yeah, okay, let let me jump at it because now I have this um, opportunity to generate this income. They uh, some of them weren't fully vested mm -hmm. into the industry. So now that fuel prices are high, you know this is a problem. You know a problem that they're used they're not used to navigating. Um, 
and a lot of people are closing their transportation companies because of the rising cost of fuel and equipment costs. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, but what goes up must come down. Yes. So things will right themselves at some point or another. So everybody just hang on, right? Yes, hang on. Hang it's on. Gonna, it's going to be okay. We'll be okay. Yes. I'll, I'm going to end on that note. Okay. Nice and positive. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Thank you. We're back after this. Money Monday is sponsored by Husky Financial.